welcome to the warehouse. Thank you for letting me fill in. It was good to be back in here. Um, I forgot some of the things, like it's dark, um, real dark up here on the stage. And um, sometimes it's hard to see your music, so bear with us. In addition to that, um, the band knows this, but it's also hard to hear from here. So I am trusting that it sounds really good out there. <laughs> God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you despair. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. this morning that you need to be aware of, and I believe most of them are in your bulletin. Let me just highlight them for you. Uh, today at 4.30 is the church council meeting in the fellowship hall for um, to give us enough space to do that. And let's talk about the giving tree. Um, mine are in the back seat of my car. I forgot to bring them in here this morning. But if you took an ornament from the giving tree, those gifts are due back like today, I think, actually. Get them back as soon as you can so that they can be wrapped and distributed. It looks like there might be one or two more over there. There are probably a few more also in the narthex in front of the sanctuary. Let's, um, if, you, if you've only gotten one, go get another one. Um, if you've only gotten five, maybe go get one more too. Uh, we want to be sure to bless every family who has expressed needs to our church for this special time during Christmas here. Now, next week, 
There will not be a nine o'clock service in the warehouse. There's no warehouse service next week because um, Lessons of Carols are one of our larger Christmas programs will take place at 11 in the sanctuary. So I hope you all join us for that. Um, Christmas Eve service also is coming. They'll be on Christmas Eve the day before Christmas. There will be two services, one at five and one at six, depending on what letter your last name ends in. I think it's A through, anybody? A, A through L is at five, and any guests that you wish to bring with your family at that time at five o'clock, and then at six o'clock, it'll be M through the Z's. Um, we're gonna clean the sanctuary in between those two services. Let's see. Now, our offering is in the baskets outside. Is it outside? Oh, back in the corner. Thank you very much. Okay, so change goes in the buckets, loose change, and loose bills are okay in the buckets too. That's for the Bucket Brigade to support missions in Mitchell County, and um, the baskets are for your regular offering or tithe. You can also give through Venmo. How many people have given through Venmo ever, like here at the church? What? Am I the, okay, two, two, three people, four people, five people? Okay, that's so easy, you guys. Sometimes when we have a special offering, especially when we have a special offering, I just do it during the service so I don't forget. Um, oh, there it is right there. So snappy. At Camilla United Dash Methodist Church. Let's see, I don't think I missed anything. All right. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave the sign Bow to babe on bended knee The savior of humanity Unto us a child is
Good morning. Um, our text today come from Isaiah chapter 61. And if you can go ahead and throw that on the screen. Hey, hey. Go ahead and read it. Um, my preacher Bible got locked in another vehicle. So. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. And this is the word of God people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, this time of year <clears throat> is, um, of course, a time for joy, right? Just ask Jed and his mama. Um, you know, they have one of these uh, elf on the shelf. And I thought that you got an elf on the shelf and like you just set it on the shelf and then you set it, you know, on another shelf and maybe if you were feeling like real I see you set it in the bathroom one day. It's like, ooh, wow, the elf's in the bathroom today. But apparently that was like a long time ago when you just did it like that. Now you got to, I mean, it's production, right? One day the elf is camping out in front of a candle roasting mini marshmallows. And then the next day the elf is um, swinging from the chandelier, you know, with the two ropes hanging out, he's swinging. Uh, so she's up all night making the elf deal, and then Jed wakes up every morning and he's, Pig! The elf's name is Figgy, after Figgy Pudding. And he goes, Pig, 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 Pig! <laughs> and he just, uh, the whole time, he just wants up, Pig, Pig, Pig! So they're having a ball, right, every day. It's a major production for Jed and Figgy. But, uh, this text today that we read, the lectionary reading for today, this Sunday of Advent, <coughs> actually gives space for a bit of um, Advent grief, or lament, mourning, or at the very least, a sense of longing. <clears throat> this passage from the prophet Isaiah, like many passages that relate and are uh, readings for this Advent season, it was written to Israel during their captivity in Babylon, often referred to as the Babylonian exile because they were exiled away from their homeland. This is a period um, when the people were truly hurting, when their homes and infrastructure had crumbled, when Jerusalem was basically destroyed and there was no temple in which they could worship God. The Old Testament is full of passages uh, concerning this historical period 
where they're crying out to God, lamenting their situation. The psalmist cries out, How long, O Lord? How long, O Lord, is this going to go on? And I think that we've all felt that cry in one way or another. In many ways, this has been a year of exile, a year of the crumbling of familiar infrastructure. You know, at one point the church doors were closed and we could not gather. Uh, still today, many of our friends and church family are not comfortable coming into a building like this. No matter how bad they want to, it's just not practical for them and their family. <clears throat> Nothing has been normal about this year and it's been difficult to adapt. And in many ways, you know, that that sense of exile, that sense of um, the familiar being gone, I think really is where Israel was when this passage was written. Beyond just this year, you know, we continue, I always talk about that year, year, whatever. We know that we live in a broken world. 2020 may have been especially obvious, but we were living in a fallen world in 2019, and 2018, and on back forever. <clears throat> we know something is broken. We know that something is not right. As uh, C. Baxter Kruger says, how can you be homesick if you have no home? The proof that we have a home is that we're homesick. Right? The reason we know that all is not well with the world as it stands today is because we were made for something so much greater. And beyond the grief in this passage that, that, um, that cries out, there is an overwhelming hope of the promise. That's the context that Isaiah says the ancient ruins will be rebuilt. <clears throat> when Jesus stood up at the temple to introduce himself, this is the passage that he read, right? He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. And the good news... As it says, who is it for? Good news to who? It's not to the rich or the powerful. It's not to those who have it all together. The good news that this passage brings is to the poor, the broken, the oppressed. And the good news that Isaiah preached, that Jesus brought, is the same good news do we bring this in every advent? God is coming. It will not always be like it is. All things will be made new. That this world is not the final state of things. That there will be a day when um, things will be made like they are. Advent is a season of hope. We, uh, we focus rightly on the coming of Christ and on His incarnation. That's what Christmas is all about. But the passages in the Advent readings, they're always, they always bring up this type of grief and this type of uh, lament and this type of sense that something is off in the world, that sin is still out there and that there is something we're still waiting for. There's something that we're still anticipating. There's something that still gives us a reason to hope. Advent is the time when we not only look back to the coming of Christ, but when we prepare and we long for the second coming of Christ. When... Um, and he will make all things new. And when all the pain of this time and this world 
will be gone. Uh, I woke up in the middle of the night earlier this week, and I don't usually say stuff like this, but I really felt like the Lord put something on my heart, and um, just, I, I usually sleep pretty good, but I woke up, and I couldn't go back to sleep, and this passage came to me. I hadn't been thinking about it, but uh, you remember Elijah on the mountain and comes up against the prophets of Baal. And they say, you know, if your God is God, then uh, we're going to build these two altars and we're going to cry out to Baal and you cry out to your God. And whoever, whatever God answers by fire, let that God be God. All right. And so the prophets of Baal do their thing. They cut themselves. I mean, they, they have a show. And nothing happens. And then when it comes Elijah's turn to cry out to God, they come, or he allows it to happen, but buckets of water are dumped on the fire or the uh, altar, right? Just buckets of water. And I felt like, you know, as we gather to worship, which is the metaphor of the altar, right? There have been a lot of buckets of water dumped on our sacrifice this year. Maybe more for you personally um, than just the whole community. But... There have been a lot of buckets of water trying to dampen what we're here to do. We're here to celebrate and to worship the God who brings joy, who brings peace, who brings the hope that all things will be made new. And we keep trying to do that, and they keep seeing buckets of water dumped on that. But the good news is that... Um, what happened? Isaiah said, a, or sorry, Elijah said a 63 word prayer, and God answered by fire. All those buckets of water, all those events that have happened, they couldn't stop what God was going to do. And so, um, yeah, that woke me up the other night. And I felt like that was really where I hope we're at. That, uh, that God is going to do something among us. That, that we're going we're gonna to continue to worship Him. That we're going to put our lives on the altar. And no matter how much has been dumped on it over this past year, that God will do something. God will show up. God will answer by fire. And that as we look forward to this Christmas, um, to the next year, that we look forward with hope and with anticipation. Not that our spirits are dampened by the water that's been poured on us, but that we're expecting God, in spite of all that, to still answer by fire. Um, so let's pray, and Miss Adela and Miss Susan will, will come back and uh, close out this service. But Father, we thank you for um, continuing to gather us here. It's our prayer that uh, that this good news, that this hope that you bring us even in the mourning and the, and the grieving of uh, this broken world that Advent always reminds us of. That we will look to you, we'll embrace that hope, that we'll um, humble ourselves, that we'll see ourselves not as the rich and the powerful and those who have it all together, but the poor, the broken, the oppressed, so that we can receive that good news. And we pray that, um, that your promise be true in our hearts, that 
that you do answer by fire, that you do answer when we call on you. It's in Christ's name. y'all know. So I can listen for you on the chorus, but the words are for Advent and Christmas.
What? 